Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography, and I'm happy to announce a major update to Star Console, giving you more features and versatility than the original version. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Now let's jump on in and learn how to download and use the latest version of Star Console. Star Console is a script that I designed in order to help implementing the full Blur Exterminator as well as removing your stars a lot easier. And Star Console even has a feature where you can check your star information in your subframes in order to do an initial check and make sure that things are looking good. Now, since I designed Star Console, I've had a lot of suggestions on different features that should be available on it. And uh, I want to thank each and every one of you for those suggestions. Frank at SETI Astro, um, Astro Island, uh, a lot of you have made a lot of amazing suggestions. Please don't get offended if I didn't mention your name. Um, I love the suggestions. They're, they're there to help make the scripts easier and better for everyone to use. And truly, I appreciate the suggestions. Now, if you have used Star Console before, I'm sure you can already see some differences in here, the uh, implementation of uh, suggestions that have been made. And I wanna redo the tutorial to go over these changes and ensure that everyone knows how to use this. Um, first, how do you get the script? If you already have my repository link downloaded, the next time you load PixInsight, you should get a notification in the top left of your window that states that there are updates available. Simply click on that notification and you'll see a window pop up in the center of your screen which has the available repository updates. From there, click Select All, click OK, and then exit out of PixInsight. If for some reason you don't get that notification, what you want to do is go to Resources, updates and check for updates. That'll prompt PixInsight to check for any repository updates that are available and you'll get the window that pops up in the center showing the updates and from there you'll click select all, OK, and then exit out of PixInsight. Now if you don't have my repository link, I'll have the repository link in the description of this video and that link is a package which contains all of my scripts. Another way that you can get the repository link is head over to my website, hiddenlight-photography.com, go to PixInsight Scripts, and here you'll see my repository link along with instructions on how to download it in the PixInsight. The easiest way to do this is click on the link and that'll open up a new tab which will have my repository link in the URL section. Just click in the URL section That'll highlight the entire repository link, copy the link, head back into PixInsight, go to Resources, Updates, and Manage Repositories. That'll open up the Manage Update Repositories window, and from there you'll click Add, and paste the repository link into the Add PixInsight repository window. And then you'll click OK. Now, I already have this repository link downloaded, so I'm not gonna do it again, but once you click OK, you'll see my repository link in the Manage Update Repositories window. Once you see my repository link in this window, click OK, and then go to Resources, Updates, and Check for Updates. That'll prompt PixInsight to check for any repository updates. In this case, I don't have any updates available, so I'm gonna get this window here. What you'll end up seeing though is a window that pops up which has all of the available repository updates and you'll click select all, okay, and then you'll go ahead and exit out of PixInsight. Now, once you exit out of PixInsight, you'll get, you may or may not get a window that pops up in the center of your screen that asks if you want to allow the application to make changes to your device. If you get that, just click yes and that'll prompt PixInsight to update. Now, once PixInsight is done updating, it should automatically restart. If it doesn't, just go ahead and reopen PixInsight. And once PixInsight is opened, go to Script, and you'll see HLP, and you'll have all of my scripts. 
one of them being Star Console. Now, since my initial release of Star Console, I have added some features here. Um, we'll go down the list. For subframe star check, this can be used in order to do an initial check of your subframes, specifically the star data. In fact, if we check subframe star check, we'll see add light subframe files, um, then become enabled. What we'll do is we'll click that and we can navigate into uh, some of our subframes. For example, here, uh, if we go to M31, we'll go to panel one, just as an example, we'll take our blue uh, files, we'll go to our lights, and we can go ahead and highlight all of our light frames, click open, and the script will go ahead and open all of those light frames into our tree box here. And the first release just had the full width half max uh, capability. Um, I have since added the eccentricity values as well as stars detected. So if we have any frames here that look off, something doesn't seem right, what we can do is we can select those frames. If we hold control, we can select um, whichever frames look weird or we can hold shift and select a series of frames. Once we have those frames that look odd to us selected, we can come down to save selected and we can go ahead and choose a folder here. Let's go to, let's just say test. We'll get into that test folder that we just created, click select and the script is gonna go ahead and save all of those uh, selected frames into a folder, which we have here under test and we can then take those frames and do further investigation, uh, put them through blank or your preferred method of inspecting frames to see what may have happened. We can then also delete those selected frames to get them out of our stack. And then since we like the remaining frames, we can then go ahead and save the remaining and we can you know, pick a folder again, let's do another folder. We'll call this one good, select the good folder, select, and it'll save those remaining frames from the tree box into the folder that we just selected, which we can then see over here. Here's our good folder and here's the remaining frames and we can use those for our stack. Now, let's go back into star console we have, again, the ability to do the full blur exterminator process. The script will go ahead and uh, if it's a color image, automatically extract the luminance, get the full width half max, and plug it into the PSF diameter of, um, of blur exterminator. The addition from the original release is we can now adjust the stellar and non-stellar sharpening capabilities of Blur Exterminator, which if we go into Blur Exterminator, would be our um, stellar adjustment and our non-stellar adjustment. And I have the script set up to the um, default values that Blur Exterminator has of 0.5 for each. So if we take a look in Star Console, both of them are set to 0.5 and they go up or down to exactly what Blur Exterminator has set in, um, in, its, in its values. So we can adjust those how we see fit. And then of course we have our star removal, which utilizes um, both Star Exterminator and now StarNet. And this was another suggestion, which amazing suggestion. Thank you for, um, for recommending that. So we can check our full star um, correction using Blur Exterminator. And then we can check star removal if we want the script to then remove the stars. Now I've also implemented with Star Exterminator, we can either unscreen the stars or we can choose just a stars only image. 
all you have to do is just click the appropriate um, radio control here. And if you uh, don't have Star Exterminator, but you have StarNet, you can then choose StarNet Linear if you're working on a linear image or StarNet Nonlinear if you're working on a uh, nonlinear image. You can also use the script to just remove the stars by simply not having full star correction checked. Or on the flip side, you can have the script just uh, run the full Blur Exterminator for you. Um, all you need to do here is select the image that you want to um, have the script run and then click measure full with half max. Another uh, thing that I wanna point out, if you don't have anything checked at all, you have an image selected and you click measure full with half max, this script won't really do anything with the image. It'll just give you your uh, full with half max, eccentricity, and stars detected information. Um, if you wanted to um, know that information, there it is right over there. It'll also go ahead and display in the tree box for you. Um, now, if you have you know a specific uh, uh, set of parameters that you wanna do, such as I like to use star exterminators on screen stars. I also like to run the full blur exterminator and you're using these settings over and over, um, what you can end up doing is take the triangle which is gonna be the new instance, another amazing suggestion, bring it onto the workspace, and you can actually just take the icon and drop it on the images that you wanna work on, and the script will go ahead and perform the settings that you have set. Um, in this case, we're gonna run the full Blur Exterminator, and then once the full Blur Exterminator is done running, the script will go ahead and run Star Exterminator Unscreen Stars. Or if you have StarNet or any other options selected, it'll go ahead and run that. Um, and then once the script is done, it'll leave you with stars that are fully corrected through uh, Blur Exterminator. It'll have the uh, sharpening values for both stellar and non-stellar that you have set. Uh, and it'll also leave you with a um, a starless image as well as a star image through your selection that you can then go ahead and continue on your workflow and uh, perform the rest of the steps to get an amazing image. So here we are, Star Exterminator is done. We have our starless image and we have our stars image. Uh, the other thing, um, if we go back into our process console, it'll show you exactly what was used. Here, um, the script used a uh, PSF diameter of 1.36. Uh, this is helpful if you're using the new instance option. It'll show you the values for stellar and non-stellar sharpening. Um, so it gives you the information right here in the console that you can then use if you wish to know it. So I hope you find this script useful, and if you do and want to help support the channel, check out that join button and consider joining a Hidden Light Photography membership. There's lots of perks in it for you, and your support helps me bring you more tools and content. Another way you can help support the channel is checking out my High Point Scientific Affiliate link in the description of this video here if you're in the market for some new gear. Also, do me a favor. That channel icon that popped up? Hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Drop a comment in the comment section. How do you normally correct for and remove your stars? Would you find this script useful? And then, check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.